you can hold this still for us. Yeah, totally. So here we are, CP's <laughs> bathroom, chilling out. Liam from the Cancer Bats. me. Throwing a free show. Introduce yourselves. Diego will bring back the boom box. Shazzy will bring back the boom box. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, here we are, free show. Decided to do it. Kind of like, uh, this is like our celebration for finishing our new record. Um, and just wanted to, like, have all of our bros out, bros cats, and hear some new jams. We're going to play a bunch of new songs tonight. Awesome. And, um, yeah, we just, we haven't played Sneaky D's in forever. And then kind of one of those things, like, oh, we should play a show there, we should play a show there. And then, um, I forget how it came together. Just, like, we know the guys here, and we're just like, could we play a free show? Yes. Okay, cool. We'll right. invite all of our friends. So yeah. when did you finish the new record? Uh, last Thursday. Well, like last Friday nice. was the last day. And then we all went and watched Every Time I Die. It was nice. the best party ever. Yeah, nice. um, that was a great show. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's it. With Cancer Bats 3 is in the bag now. It's called Bears, Mares, Scraps, and Bones. Bears, Mares, Scraps, where's, where's that name from? What happened? There? Uh, it's kind of a reference to like the four of us. It's sort of like a, like a joke on all of our nicknames. But basically, the big, the main idea of it is because like we never had a bass player, like really, like a solid bass player in the band, because um, we were kind of in between bass players before when we recorded Hail Destroyer. So now that we have Jay in the band, it's sort of like the biggest deal. Like he's brought a lot to it, and the fact that everyone's you know really stepping up, so it really feels like we're like a real band. So that was why I came up with the name to kind of like reference that. That it's just like now we're this like rock solid. Like we're not gonna have any member changes. Like this is what we are as a band, like the four of us is now like kind of how the things are working at, you know, right full up. capacity. You guys yeah. are going to go on a tour tomorrow. Yeah, we leave for tour tomorrow morning, which is pretty sweet. Building talent in the UK, right? Yeah, we um, we start with them on Monday. We're going to Iceland on uh, on Saturday, which nice. is going to be rad. Yeah. yeah, they just asked us to do it, to play like a festival, so we're going to go do that, which is going to be wicked. And then, uh, yeah, then we start uh, like six weeks with Billy Talent Bad. in uh, England and in Europe. And Silverstein's on the Europe leg, too, so nice. it's wow. going to be, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. And you're playing off dates in England as well, right? Yeah, we're doing uh, headlining shows in England, so we kind of don't really like taking like a ton of days off mm -hmm. so we'd rather like we're there might as well play shows and it's nice to play like big you know massive shows with Billy Town and then play like sweaty bar shows like this like yeah. Yeah. it makes it a lot more fun so um, we're doing that with this kick-ass band from England called The Computers and then uh, a bunch of our friends are jumping on too so it's gonna be a good time and you guys just got up to her a little while ago before you started recording yeah we kind of took the whole summer off yeah. um we learned our lesson like hail destroyer we were fucking broke so we had to keep like touring uh in between writing yeah. to be able to like live you yeah. know so this time we had like a bit you know like a bit of money saved up and we were able to like go like okay that last time was a nightmare you know we had to pr we had to like to write that record in the time frame that we needed, we were like jamming like 12 hours a day, like working in shifts. Like it was like, it was fucking wow. stupid. So this time we learned from our mistake and we like, we gave ourselves all this time um, to figure everything out and to actually jam and like work on all the songs. And it was just like crazy how much better it worked out when we were just able to do that. So we played a few festivals like Edge Fest and Scene Fest and uh, we did like a little two week tour, but for the most part we were just like jamming every day. And kind of to a certain point, we were just like re-recording like the record and all the songs like over and over and over again. We had like our own gear set up in our practice space, so we were just like we we record demos, listen to them. I'd write lyrics, we'd record some stuff, like and kind of just like always be like uh, processing it and trying to outdo ourselves, right. which was wicked because normally we'll like put everything on tape, kind of go like, okay, that makes sense, and then just go, yeah. but like back on tour or like go and record it, you know. So you don't get a lot of time to like really like sit back and think about what you've just done where this was a lot of like does that make sense should i be singing over your drum fill you know what i mean like actually having like a dialogue with all of us and i think everyone's input's coming in a lot more instead of just like no fuck it it works like don't worry about it or like no that sucks do something else or you know what i mean so yeah, this is a lot a lot better where everyone is just like so psyched now on like all 15 songs that we recorded instead of like okay we'll try and get 10 you know what i mean it was just yeah, like everything like was working so much better this time around, so I'm super stoked on how it turned out. So last one, Hill Destroyer was with Eric Ratz, right? And yeah, this one as well. Well, Eric Ratz has been, uh, Eric Ratz and Kenny Luong worked on every record we've done. Right. But uh, the first record, it was Gavin Brown producing, right. and then those two guys were his engineers. And we loved those dudes. Like, not to say we didn't love Gavin, but I mean, we just got along super well with them, but we were like, 
maybe we don't need to break the bank. Like, we can just steal his engineers. <laughs> and, like, that was kind of like where we were just like, oh, we'll keep working with him, with these guys. And then Hail Destroyer was really, like, their first record they had stepped up and produced. And then since then, they've been, like, producing bands for the last two years. So now they're, like, really comfortable with, like, you know, having their voice and, like, stating their opinions and like kind of it, it's nice to have like the bad guy yeah, in some yeah. cases yeah, where totally. you need to have like the the big like the boss to come in and be like no shut up that's perfect you're like no <laughs> I say it's right so fuck you guys you know yeah. and it's like because otherwise you'll just argue yeah. with each other like I think it should go like this no I think it should go like this someone's gotta be yeah to so be like no like, you're both wrong it's going yeah. like this you're like okay no, <laughs> sorry Greg the Mistort had some uh, like action in your albums too right He's yeah he always he always gets involved because Greg he used to like record tons of bands and that's yeah. how he started that's having that's a musical and so we always get Greg to come and have executive producer kind of credit on the whole thing what, is, what does he really do does he just have a listen and like tweak a little bit or? Um, yeah or just like recording sessions if anything it's more just like having him there for his opinion and kind of like his you know Cheers. vibe like he's been with like a band since the start you know what I mean so the fact that like we want him there to hear his opinion because he's the only person that's been like aside from Scott and I he's the only person that's been around since the start of the band right. we've got like a, you know a different drummer a different bass player so for him he's got like that whole perspective and he's got an outside ear because he's thinking like maybe more business than we are or a lot of times he's just like make it heavier you know so yeah. we're like okay yeah so, uh, so that side of things is awesome yeah love Greg like just especially having like the family aspect of like distort yeah. and just like we love being a part of that and he's been so supportive of us so it's just like hanging out and watching Rambo and then like you know yeah. kicking in the studio nice. but, uh, so you guys just uh, put in an email a while ago and see covers on it how did that come in what made you um, the choice of covers oh thank you well that was the thing we, j- we just like uh, when we were writing Hail Destroyer we kind of wanted to do some covers and stuff like that because we wanted to have some extra B-sides, and we didn't know what we were going to do with it. So we were like, well, we might as well like pick each person will pick a song, and we'll uh, we'll do a cover of it. So 